Hey there, thanks for tuning into Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and today we have a very special review of an exclusive Lego set. This is one of the BrickLink AFOL Designer Program Round 2 sets, where if you aren't aware of what exactly these were, essentially there was a program back around 2021 where Lego was allowing rejected sets from the Lego Ideas Program, which had reached 10,000 supporters but were never made into official sets, to have the chance to be crowdfunded into real Lego sets. And this is one of them. So I purchased this around October 2021. It has been almost a full year, but I finally have gotten it now. I am currently located in the US and I believe Europe and Asia actually got these a lot sooner, but unfortunately the US orders are just now starting to ship, but I'm incredibly excited to share this review with all of you. So this is set number 910015. It is the Clockwork Aquarium. What's really cool is that the set is four in one. So as you can see on the box, you can actually change the backdrop of it, as well as see the mechanism for rotating it. Now, unfortunately, the thing is that these BrickLink AFOL Designer Program sets were very, very expensive. This was 65 US dollars for this size of a set, and this was the smallest one of round two. They only got bigger from here. So of course, at the end of the review, I'll be sure my thoughts on whether or not the set was worth it. Now the BrickLink AFOL Designer Program and this particular line of sets is really famous for a couple of reasons. Obviously they gave us some fantastic sets like the Castle in the Forest that was easily a crowd favorite and sold out within seconds of being launched, but there were a lot of complaints about kind of a poor distribution of them. If you lived in certain territories you just simply would not have been able to buy these, and they really just sold out very very quickly and typically were only available for order throughout the span of one day, and for stuff like the castle, only a few seconds or minutes. So I will discuss all of that and more in this review, but for now, let's jump right into the Clockwork Aquarium. Okay, so here we have set number 910015. It is the Clockwork Aquarium. It retailed for 65 US dollars when it was released for a brief moment of time on Brickling and Lego.com, as well as 55 euros. It comes with 874 pieces, making the price per part ratio actually pretty good at 7.4 cents. Although, looking at what you get, I don't know if this is worth 65, and we'll share a little bit more about that when we get into the review. So the first thing you're going to notice here is that, well, that fell over. This is the Clockwork Aquarium, but you have a lot of different options for what you can do with it. That's not going to stay up. You have different types of backdrops, you have different scenes, and all sorts of different things in terms of playing around with what you want to be focused on the scene. So what I've done for the review is I've basically built it in the standard configuration. This is the one on the box. It is the kind of A model, so to speak. It's the main one that they want to showcase, so you do have that. But I do want to showcase all of these really quickly first, just in case you want to see what the other options look like. So let's see how this works. Zoomed in here, you basically turn the crank on the side and the fish swim around, you have the crab going up and down and spinning in the center, as well as the octopus from the Lego Friends Little Aquatic Animals pack spinning around as you rotate the fish around the corner. It is basically using the exact same system as the LEGO Ninjago City 2017 modular conveyor belt for the sushi lineup there, so you basically have a little lineup of Technic pieces, like 1x2 little Technic bars, and they have that rotating all around. It's a nice simple function, and that's basically it. There's nothing much else that you can see with the model itself, like the entire thing is just built around this. If you're curious about the mechanism, you can open up this part here, and I do actually really appreciate how they did this. You can see what it looks like on the inside, so let me just get that closer to the camera here so you can take a look at what exactly does this look like. So you've got the fish mounted like so. You just have a crank down here, and this piece right there is just moving the middle bar up and down, so you have a little bit of extra motion, and you just have the kind of Technic three bar piece that's spinning around the conveyor. It's very smooth, it works really well, works pretty perfectly actually, and you can actually get it like spinning up pretty quickly. Yeah. This is actually one that can work very smoothly, and I was a little bit worried at first to see how smooth it would be, because actually the official one that LEGO did for the Ninjago City set was not that smooth. Sometimes it caught on certain corners, but it actually works out quite well for this. So that is the main, I mean, that's all you can do with it. You can look at the back. The back is pretty much exposed. You can see the, the back kind of backdrop here. Obviously not meant to be seen from the back, because you just have the panels, and that's it. Like, this is, this is the set. However, you have a number of other backdrops where if you wanted to, you had the option to put a different type of background for it. 
The first one here is a pirate themed one, so what you are supposed to do with this is you take out the backdrop there and just put this in. It's uh, not actually that easy to swap things out, and many of these require complete rebuilds of the way that everything goes in. So the instruction manual was basically divided up into build a little bit of this first, then set aside the other parts, and then build this, and then use the other parts from the other bag for this. You really have to mix and match it, and it really just depended on what you wanted to do, but you had the option to swap in the pirate backdrop, so you could put the pirate backdrop in, and this was a treasure chest that opens up as you move it along, so as the fish are swimming around there, this whole bottle rotates like so, so you have the barrel that kind of goes back and forth. That is not actually attached in there, it really is just loose, so just kind of plop that there. And this Technic piece here just kind of sits at the back, and you use it, let me just get this pushed up, to open and close the treasure chest as things go back and forth. So. The main intent was that this is continuously pushing up and down to make it look like the skeleton is opening the treasure chest. I tried this out earlier, and to be honest, it doesn't work the best because the treasure chest just kind of stays up. Like, it kind of just goes like this and the chest stays up, even if it's like completely flat. So, not the best working thing, it's supposed to just keep closing like this, but there wasn't quite enough weight to make that happen. Then again, it's a nice little thing to have, so if you do want a more pirate-themed one, you have that backdrop. The other one here was just another type of underwater backdrop. Feels honestly a little bit like padding. Like, I definitely appreciate how you have distinct ones. You have a, an underwater aquarium, you have the pirate, and you have another one, which we'll take a look at in a second. This one felt a little redundant to me. It was just another type of underwater backdrop that's very similar to what you have back there. And they encourage you to swap out the fish. So instead, now you have like silver fish that are swimming around, uh, these ones right here. I prefer the colorful ones, so you can actually see them more clearly, so I did not choose to use this one, but you can do that. And it is using the same interior middle piece as well. And then by far the most interesting one was this one, I think, personally one of the most interesting ones, because you basically have a half water and half above water type setup, and to do this, this requires the most rebuilding. You take the window screens here and you use these instead, so it's almost like the water only goes up to half of the glass amount. And you have this, so the underwater section's here, above water section is here. For the underwater section, you have a squid that kind of pops up and spins around like it's attacking the boat, so I really liked that. And you also have a little miniature boat itself. I think the build for this was actually really nice. I like the cannons being done with the binocular piece just turned around. That is very clever, so I do like the little ship. And then you have, I guess, like flying fish that kind of jump up and swim around. They're not quite as tall as the other ones, so if you have it mounted down here, it looks like they're swimming more underneath the ship rather than above the ship, so they use shorter bars there. And that's basically it. And otherwise, there's a few things you swap out. For the pirate one, you put like little rubies and gold, like that's why these little one by one studs are here. You can put those in the corner of the displays rather than some underwater dis type stuff. All of these other bricks are meant to kind of truncate this to the half water portion to be able to use this backdrop here. But after the set is built, after all is said and done, to be completely honest, I'm left feeling like I paid a good amount of money for something that is not that big. Uh, and let me explain, because obviously if you look at the pieces, looking at the pieces, this is a good deal. You have a lot of different stuff to do, you have different backdrops, but realistically, I don't know how many times I would actually be wanting to swap backdrops out. I didn't even want to do it on camera for the review because it's honestly a lot of work to swap them out, and I feel like you can just basically see them as they are right here. You can, I mean, it's just different backdrops, so you can see them right here, not really a need to do the swapping myself. So now you have $65 for this plus backdrops, plus like all of this other stuff. Hmm, I don't know. I mean, this to me feels like a $35, $40 build at most, maybe, and, and that's that's being pretty generous. I think with the amount of stuff that you get, maybe, okay, maybe like, I don't even want to say 50. 45, 45. This feels good for 45. I mean, maybe then, because 65, that's only $20 more for all this other stuff. Personally, I feel like I probably would have preferred it, and I'm sure lots of other people would have preferred if instead of doing this, they just chose one backdrop, stuck with that one, took away all this other stuff, and charged like $40 for this. I would have been much happier with that, and I'm sure that that would have been a much more popular set to do something smaller, but I feel like the price is a little bit inflated by all the extra stuff, where realistically, if you're going to be putting this on display, all of these are going to be like thrown in a drawer somewhere, or at best you're going to like display these backdrops next to it, and then all the other pieces, like I don't know what you're going to, I don't know what I'm going to do with all this stuff on the floor right in front of it. So. 
Value-wise, I definitely feel like I would have preferred just getting the main aquarium, which is built well. Don't get me wrong, it's built really nicely, the function is great, I love seeing the fish swim around, that's actually a really fun thing to see, but it just doesn't quite feel like you're getting enough bang for your buck here. That's just how I feel, and I would of course love to hear what other folks think, but yeah, it's an interesting one, not one of my favorite Bricklink Designer Program sets, just not the most interesting thing to me personally. It's something that has been done in LEGO before with the same function, albeit this does it better, it doesn't actually jam like the Ninjago City Sushi Conveyor Belt, but I feel like it either should have been cheaper or another set should have been made. But that's just how I feel. I do like the concept and I like the overall look and feel of the build itself, just feels a little bit overpriced. With that, we've basically summed up my review of the Clockwork Aquarium, and I'm curious to hear what folks' thoughts are on this set, and if you have this set, if you've built it, what do you think about the value and about the play feature as well? All right, and with that, we have summed up our review of the Bricklink AFL Designer Program Clockwork Aquarium. Let me know down in the comments below, do you like it, do you dislike it, and were you able to secure a copy of the set for yourselves? Of course, I would love to hear your thoughts, so please go discuss in the comments. And thanks so much for tuning into Duck Bricks. Stay tuned for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon, and bye-bye for now.